Hello and welcome to 18 WJTS Inform. And it's Friday, and as we are usually honored on Friday, State Senator Mark Mesmer joins us in the studio to kind of give us a recap of what's been happening at the State House. Senator, welcome once again to the show. Great to be here again uh, this week after finally having a couple weeks of, of inaugural stuff and state of the state and state of the judiciary and all the ceremonial things that, that kind of clunk up the first two weeks. Right. This week was a, a full head of steam and and uh, we'll be in high gear. Uh, we have our mid midway crossover point about the first week of March, so the next few weeks will be busy. This week was real busy, so. Well, let's, let's start talking about some All of the right. things you think that people would like to know about and how things are going for you. Sure, okay. Well, we had, uh, we had 15 bills and, and, a, and a joint resolution uh, have final passage this week. I had one of my first bills uh, receive final passage in the Senate unanimously, so that's always good when they <laughs> oh, yeah. sh should be a non-controversial non bill. And actually one that has some good practical, I mean, a lot of these things just popped up out of the district. I had a fellow from Hayesville called me last summer. He said, I sold my car to a, an, a, another individual, lived in Huntingburg. He never transferred the, the title to his name. He's gotten a bunch of traffic tickets accumulate, and so the bills came to me. Okay. He said, I went to the BMV, and they said, uh, you know, there's nothing, nothing in law that allows us to transfer that vehicle out of your name. Mm -hmm. um, so Huntingburg was happy enough to waive his tickets, which that was good. Yeah. Uh, and, and the BMV said, you know, you're going to have to find some resolution from the General Assembly. So he called me, and I put together a, a bill draft, and the BMV said, you know, that'd be a good idea because this kind of thing happens you know, several times a year and, and there's no remedy. So this would allow the seller of a vehicle to take their bill of sale and their, their um, former um, vehicle registration and take it in as, and, and get the transfer of the vehicle out of their name. Now that could come into play when you scrap a vehicle out and then sometimes when you sell a vehicle at auction that other person doesn't ever complete that transaction. So. A lot of people thought it was a good idea. Just wonder yeah. how does that never happen before, or why nobody ever tried to fix it. So, uh, but that, that was, that's what was going through my mind. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, way to go. That's well, a good one. Yeah. yeah. So that was a good one. Yeah. Um, the other, you know, big item we passed this week was SJR seven. It's the it's the constitutional balance budget amendment. Our constitution uh, requires that Indiana not go into debt, but it's really been loosely determined in the courts what exactly that means. Mm -hmm. um, what, I mean, what we are for sure not allowed to do is just take a bond out on budget deficits and, and fund, you know, like a lot of states do that, Illinois being one of them, mm -hmm. they just keep taking out bonds on more and more debt and pretty soon you end up with a pretty scary scenario. Well, what we've had happen in our state in the past is for maybe our fiscal year ends on June 30th, it's July, July 1 to June 30. And there was many, many years they just quit paying their bills in June or maybe, you know, all the way back to the last week in May, they just stopped paying their bills when they're out of money. And then every, I mean, you know, maybe one year it's two weeks and the next year it's three weeks mm -hmm. and, they, and they just would get farther and farther, you know, behind in paying. So they were never officially in debt, but they weren't, they were spending more, they were, you know, more than they were mm -hmm. taking. So this uh, SJR7 will just put some teeth into what, you know, what that, balanced budget requirement or no debt requirement on our constitution means and and put some parameters on it and if there are times when you've got you know emergency situations you know what what legislative that has to happen to deal with that so uh, we were only one of four states not to have a balanced budget amendment in our constitution so uh, it's Soon probably time we will. So, yeah it, it'll be if it gets passed in this General Assembly, which it probably will, it passed you know, uh, in the last General Assembly, it'll go on the ballot in 2018 for uh, voter approval. So I would expect it to move through the process because I think it really just firms up what everybody thought was you know, our, our constitutional requirement already. It just was you know, not, it didn't have any teeth to enforce, so. Right. Um, and the big discussion, <coughs> You know, of the week at the state house and really you know to the session so far has been you know what are we going to do to deal with you know long-term road funding needs and people say well you know um why do you need to raise the gas tax well we have a <coughs> we have a 
fuel excise tax on, on our gasoline, and it's, it's 18 cents a gallon for the state uh, excise tax, and then there's a federal fuel excise tax of 18 and a half cents. And those are intended and historically have, you know, uh, have been intended to pay the bills on, uh, on road funding needs. Uh, the last two budget cycles, <clears throat> we've had to put in you know, $600 million out of the general fund revenue, which is your sales tax and income tax, to come up to cover what's been short uh, from the 18 cents uh, fuel excise tax. Uh, we've also, the last two budget cycles, uh, four years ago we, we took, uh, of the 7% sales tax, we put 1.5% uh, four years ago, uh, you know, allocated more to to the road funding uh, revenue from sales tax on gas, and this past year took it to two and a half per, two and a half percent of the seven percent. So we have allocated you know some of the sales tax revenue from from gas, uh, all of the eighteen cents of the fuel tax, and it's still coming up, you know, and, and I said above and beyond that, you know, another another six hundred million a year out of the general fund, which then you know your income tax is paying for the roads your sales tax portion is paying for the roads and ideally you'd want that that road that road tax uh, you know f vehicle registration fees for alternative uh, fuel vehicles have never they've never had to pay in if you're an electric car you're paying nothing so house bill 1002 is the the bill that would try to you know remedy that uh, raises the state excise tax from on fuel per gallon uh, from 18 cents to, to 28 cents. And then as it's drafted now, it would index it to inflation, uh, but it could never go up more than one cent a year, uh, you know, going forward. You know, whether we index it or not <clears throat> is a, le you know, legitimate, you know, point to question because, you know, why put, you know, the legislatures down the road off, you know, from, I guess, you know, why take them off the hook from having to raise it if it needs to be raised. Um, but if you index it, then as inflation goes up or down, you don't have to, you know, have to come back and, and readjust it. The current rate hasn't been adjusted since 2003, and just indexing it for inflation would take it to the, where the proposal is today. So, uh, and then also, and that is a $150 uh, fee for electric cars uh, or hybrids. Uh, it, there's um, Alternative fuel rates for propane and natural gas, they'll get adjusted at the same rate as the, as the fuel tax, so they're still paying on an equal footing basis per gallon or per equivalent gallon for those alternative fuels. <clears throat> and then it has a $15 per vehicle, you know, just registration fee that'll go towards uh, road funding. So uh, with that, the, you know, the goal is to, to generate another five to six hundred million a year, you know, from revenue sources that are specifically you know, uh, part of the, the you know, the, the uh, fuel tax or, or, you know, more like a, you know, base it on user fees and not have to supplement it from the general fund, you know, from year that's year. where it's going anyway. That, it's going for the roads. So right. The folks using the roads should be paying. Paying pay for it. The more you use, the more you pay. Right. Um, and um, a, a person I was chatting with a couple weeks ago recapped that I thought, well, he said all roads are toll roads. It's just where you pay the toll and how you pay the toll. And if you had a dedicated toll road that you were trying to maintain, mm -hmm. your toll should cover the repayment of building the road and it should cover maintenance of the road. And if, if you had a toll road that, that wasn't keeping up and you were constantly have to you know, replenish it from the general fund, a logical person would say, well, you need to tweak that, you know, that toll to cover what you're short um, if you're not keeping up, and <clears throat> the proposals in House Bill 1002, you know, are you know, to, I mean, if your toll is the fuel tax, and that covers of that fuel tax, 55% of that goes to NDOT, and 45% goes to the cities, towns, and counties. Comes back it to us. Comes back to us. So, and we've had to supplement the you know the local funding, uh, you know, above and beyond what what we send to NDOT for roads. I mean, we've had to supplement everybody's budgets from general fund revenue uh, for the last, uh, you know, four years, the last two budget cycles. So it's, it's, it's time to try to deal with it in a, in a responsible manner. I, I, nobody just stands up and cheers and says, yeah, I raise my taxes. But at some point, you have to get ahead of it. You, you have to get ahead of it. And, and, and you have to set it up to try to be sustainable uh, for the long term and, and bringing in, you know, some adjustments to the alternative fuel vehicle 
usages to the electric car usages because over time those are going to become a, a bigger percentage of your road funding mix and, and your as mileage standards keep getting raised by the federal government your consumption of gas you know keeps going down people shift you know to other you know alternative fuel sources mm -hmm. this will set up you know some of the mechanisms to help cover uh, those, those you know changing um, consumption methods down the road okay. so that's that's a lot going that, on. That lot going on. I mean, all the committees are, are meeting, you know, full, full, full committee meeting schedules, and, it, and it's been pretty busy. So when you're not in a committee, hearing bills, you're meeting with chairmen trying to get your bills on their, on their schedule, or you're meeting with people trying to, to convince you to, to put their bill on a committee schedule. So it, it's pretty pretty hectic pace right now, but that's good. It makes it fun. And we do want to point out that you're available tomorrow, yes, as we'll, will be State Representative Brown and State Re Representative Arnold, and maybe State Senator Houchin. Should be Houchin as well. Okay. Should be uh, all four of us there. At the Jasper Chamber of Commerce Legislative Breakfast, which mm -hmm. is 9, 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. Now, breakfast might kind of be a misnomer. It, There's sometimes some granola bars. That's about the... But, yeah. but it's not. But I it's think at the... <laughs> at the VUJC <laughs> Technology Building. Right. The C10 Building, which is the north side, the brand new building. Yep. It's in the auditorium. Nice place to go. No registration. No fee. Yep. You can sit back and listen. You can ask questions. It's really, it's, and it seems to keep growing. It's, it's a great opportunity mm -hmm. to hear what's happening in legislation. And each of you will get a chance to talk and answer questions. Correct. So look forward to that. Come out if you can. All right. And it's the first of what will maybe be two. If we'll do another three. one for sure, I think, at the end of February, yeah. and then probably one in, towards the end of the session as well. So that's tomorrow morning. So you'll get a chance to talk mm -hmm. with Mark in person, if you would like, or the state representatives. Thank you so much, uh, Senator, for coming in. It's always a pleasure to You're see you. You're very welcome. Good and to be here. Uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Okay, great. Right. Thank and you. I'll, well, I'll be seeing you tomorrow morning, as I hope, uh, folks, you'll be showing up as well. This has been WJTS Inform with State Senator Mark Messmer joining us. We thank you for watching. We are local people watching local people.